All right, so um, I am very honored, in fact, to be invited by Tony to this wonderful symposium. I have to say that um, I'm also happy to see some of my friends I met 10 years ago on various occasions when I was working for um, the International Humanist and Ethical Union and then for the American Humanist Association. Now, things changed. Um, you know, we are all getting younger. And uh, some people like change, so I do. Uh, it happened that in 2011, one of the people that you also know and is an ardent humanist and a wonderful person is Dr. Charles Dubrovner, who was the president of the Humanist Institute once. So I met him while I was working for the humanist organizations I mentioned, and we became friends. So in 2011, we had the idea of co-founding Global Bioethics Initiative. Uh, and I forgot my title is, Do People Have the Right to Die of my presentation? But I would like to, not necessarily to advertise the organization, but to say a couple of things about it in one or two minutes. Uh, so it is a not-for-profit organization, a 501c3. Uh, co-founded by myself and Dr. Charles Dubrovner, a fertility expert from Manhattan. We kept the office that we had before while I was working for the Apinani Center and afterwards for the Humanist Association. And um, 777 UN Plaza, just across the UN building, we really invite you to visit us. And I trust you will do. We have very interested events over there, and we also have an interesting mission. Um, Global Bioethics Initiative is dedicated to fostering public awareness and understanding of bioethical issues and to exploring solutions to bioethical challenges. End of life issue is a big challenge um, all over the world. Our focus issues for the first five years have been organ transplantation and organ trafficking. We've been working on that for one or two years. Actually, we are still doing some work on that. This is because we have an association with the Department of Information at the United Nations. That was the idea. And as we know, organ trafficking is um, universal, we can say. It happens everywhere. I'm not getting into details. We are working on reproductive rights. Dr. Dobrovna is an expert in fertility and also on population aging slash end of life issues. Now, our current Bear With Me program is an international bioethics summer school. And please spread the word. I had a flyer there. I have one here. Um, it is our first edition. The venue is absolutely a gorgeous building on Upper East Side of Manhattan. The Bohemian National Hall. How many of you are Slovaks? Czech? Same. Belongs to the uh, Czech Republic government. So I, would, I used to go there for dancing evenings. And then I befriended some. And then we decided to collaborate and to have the summer school in this amazing venue. And plus, there is no so much bioethics in Eastern Europe. I'm Eastern European, I forgot to say, a Romanian vampire for that reason. And there is no much bioethics in that part of the world. And almost all the countries there frown when it comes to the right to die. OK, so um, please please spread the word. You might have friends, colleagues, you might have children, graduate, undergraduate uh, students. We have an amazing faculty, Weill Cornell Medical Center, Columbia University, NYU, Fordham University. And we also have events in the evening. I will invite you, if she kindly provides me with um, your emails, or if you email me, to our evening events, with a cocktail reception on the rooftop of the wonderful building. You know there is a wonderful rooftop there. So there will be public events, and we will invite various speakers to speak also on aging and regenerative medicine. 
I think you are interested in that too. I am more interested in that rather than in the right to die, honestly <laughs> speaking. But you know, in both, because in the end I know I will die. I hope in a good way. Okay, uh, next, what happens? I can't, all right. I decided to begin with two short video clips. Uh, I assume most of you are familiar with Million Dollar Baby. I wish I could befriend Clint Eastwood. I'm sure he knows about bioethics. This is one of the most interesting films he has ever made, 2007. And then, how many of you heard about the case of Brittany Maynard? Almost all. The 29-year-old who died on November 1st, 2014, Compassion and Choices, right? The, 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 the unique case in the world, actually. Very brave young woman. We will talk about that. Okay. All right. I think the clips were not useless. I think they made a point, right? Uh, these two young women have something in common. Uh, they both want to die on their own terms, right? What is assisted suicide or assisted death? You know, some of my students were telling me that we should rather use the word assisted death to um, avoid confusion with the physician assisted suicide. But anyway, this is a general term for helping patients to terminate their lives when they are uh, severely or terminally ill and of course they request to do so. So uh, I want you to understand that some of my slides uh, might be trivial in a sense that you know about it, but this is being the first speaker I would like just to um, create a frame for discussion, a framework for discussion, that's um, my intention. There are uh, types of assisted suicide or assisted death euthanasia where physician prescribes the treatment but also directly administers the treatment to the patient. And physician-assisted suicide, called PASS, the physician prescribes the treatment, but the patient administers the treatment to himself or herself. The physician does not, administers the, uh, does not administer the treatment. Types of euthanasia, active, meaning administering uh, treatment to end life, passive, withholding from treatment that sustains life. Voluntary, of course, the patient cons uh, consents to treatment, and involuntary, the patient is unable to consent to treatment. And here's a little, um, every now and then, sorry about that, I just put a little cartoon because, you know, death might be a sad event, but also is part of our life, isn't it? So here's the confusion. <laughs> youth and in Asia. Legality. Euthanasia. It is illegal in the United States and Canada and many other countries. It is legal in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Physician-assisted suicide. It is legal, and I'm sure you know about that, in Oregon, Washington, Montana, New Mexico, and Vermont. It is also legal, of course, in the Netherlands, I said, of course, in the Netherlands, <laughs> okay. It is legal in Switzerland, Germany, Albania, Colombia, and Japan. Here's another little cartoon. Are you familiar with uh, what happened in 2012 in Massachusetts? After lobbying and man uh, managing to raise uh, millions of dollars to make sure they've been, uh, they will be successful, actually, uh, they failed. But what I liked about this cartoon is, ask your doctor if suicide is right for you. I see those ads all the time on various medication, especially with Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> that's, or Cialis. That's, that's, I found this, this brilliant, really. All right. Euthanasia in disguise. I don't know if you have heard that there, there is another um, progress, I should say. On March 17, 2015, France's lower home, House of Parliament, passed the Deep Sleep Bill. 
um, with the majority of votes, as you see. That allows doctors to sedate terminally ill patients if patients request so, and only when they have a very short period of time. How long do you think we need to request death with dignity? What's the time framework when people move to Oregon to do that or to the other? Six months, no more. But in the case of um, deep sleep or sedation, patients are supposed to have very few days to leave or very few weeks. Uh, to become a law, though, the bill must gain approval of the upper house, and that will take place in May or June. But I trust that that, that will pass, because this is part of the um, political campaign also of Hollande. And I was reading all sorts of articles and talked to a friend of mine who is from France. Very many patients in France are actually requesting this type of sedation, very many. And there are all sorts of group, um, you know, advocate, advocating groups for this. Of course, the, the bill created a turmoil in France. There are medical doctors against it. And they are saying that they should not oblige by law to do so. But guess what? They will. So another thing. Maybe the medical doctors in France opposing this do believe that people should <laughs> die naturally. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to get into details about the Oregon's death with dignity. Would you like me to do so, or you are familiar with that? You want me to do so. Okay. It's interesting. So if you are in New York, city or in New York State, where recently two actually bills have been sent, I think, to the New York State Assembly and the New York State Senate, by the way, and um, we will see what happens. But if you are currently here and it happens touch wood to get ill and to be terminally ill, you have to move to one of those five states in order to be the beneficiary or to act upon your right to die. And what does that mean? So you have to give informed and voluntary consent. You have to apply only, as I mentioned before, to the last six months of, the, of your life. You have to have two physicians who actually independently diagnose you as being terminally ill and saying that you have only six months to live, no more. You also have to uh, ask the physicians twice orally that you would like to die, and also, well, we, and also have a witness when you ask that in written only once. You have 15 day waiting period after the first oral request, so two weeks. You have 48 hours um, after you make a written request before a physician can prescribe your medication. Now, also, two physicians have to testify, if we can say so, that you are mentally sane, that there is no, you're not depressed, you don't have any other kind of mental illness. Um, recommends the patient um, to inform the relatives, so you have to inform uh, your closest relatives. And also, if you are not a resident, but we already know, if you are in New York State and you're not a resident of Oregon, you cannot do so. Now, um, also mandates the Oregon Death with Dignity Act mandates that uh, participating physicians be licensed, uh, licensed in Oregon, and I assume they have to license in the other four states that I mentioned where death with dignity is legalized. And uh, does not, death with dignity does not authorize mercy killing or active euthanasia. In other words, you have to be able to 
take and swallow the cocktail of medication that doctors prescribe. So you know what you have to do. I don't want to be, it's just a joke, so I know what I have to do if it happens to me. Okay, uh, lots of controversy, um, we know that, around the issue of the right to die. Uh, many, again, I repeat, some of the things I put here might be very known by you. People who are against, they consider that um, some patients might be terribly depressed because they're terminally ill and they don't know what they are doing. Um, maybe they want to die because they think that they are a kind of a financial burden for their families. They don't want people to take care of them and to pay for that, right? Um, those who are also against, they say that pain is controllable. And we all know, and there are so many stories, not only told by medical doctors, by physicians, but also if you read journalistic articles, this is not true. Not all pain can be 100% controllable, okay? Um, legalizing pass would lead to legalized euthanasia. And this is a fear, of course, which for them is murder or sin. We don't get into the history of, um, uh, of religion or uh, what uh, some religious people might say. You, I'm sure you know about that. You know the view of the Catholics, you know the view of, the, of Judaism, right? Um, they also say that it corrupts the practice of medicine because of the Hippocratic Oath, and it's also not true and the doctor-patient relationship. In other words, the doctor is supposed to keep you alive no matter what. This is the, uh, his main mission, so to speak. And they consider that it compromises the family intergenerational commitments and also it's against uh, human dignity. Now, those who are, like I assume all of you in this room, oh, I don't have that much to go, um, they do consider that not all pain is controllable, um, that it is humane to help people to end their suffering, and we have to actually respect the self-determination and the run to, or right to end life on their own terms, and prolonging that kind of life is not quality of life. And then I will, um, I have to finish. Look at this one, it's a nice um, cartoon. We know about the impact, again, I, this is a slide where we have, uh, this information is already known by you. I mentioned that. Why is assisted suicide a critical issue? Maybe we should discuss during the Q&A session. It is because of um, an aging population. Right? But as you see with Brittany Maynard uh, example and unique case, not only people who are uh, aged, who experience terminally ill, request um, to act upon their right to die. And let me tell you that recently in Belgium, in 2013, I think in the fall last year, they extended the euthanasia law to children who are terminally ill. Now, these are a couple of questions that I think we have to debate during our Q&A session. And I will end with some statistics. By 2020, 2.5 million Americans aged 65 and older will die every year. In 2008, Medicare spent, I think you are familiar with that, it's a huge amount of money, $55 billion on end-of-life care during the last two months of uh, patients' lives. And estimatively, 20 to 30% of these expenses had very little health impact. In other words, they were dying anyway and their quality of life did not improve, right, logically. And 18 to 20% of patients spend their final days in the ICU, which is uh, tremendously costly, and it's also um, useless, 
I should say. And that's it. Ethical questions we will discuss during our Q&A. And this is if you are Republicans. <laughs> so I wanted to leave you with this uh, last cartoon. And thank you very much.